You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hopefully, everything is live. You guys can see. I think that's what it looks like. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to jump into the story. I'm not going to bury the lead. I'll tell you what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to be talking about Julie Green. This is a QAnon, or if you're unfamiliar, absolutely obsessed with Donald Trump, believes he's the Messiah. I mean, it's crazy. And I've spent all day reading about the belief system and how it relates to Donald Trump. And there's this bizarre, twisty, turny explanation she has. Anyway, we'll get into all of it. One thing I wanted to mention before, you know, we continue. It, it's extremely valuable if you watch thing, watch my videos to the end. Um, live streams, regular videos, whatever. Just watch it to the end. More watch time is helpful to a channel also tomorrow morning wednesdays and thursday mornings 10 30 a.m to 2 30 p.m roughly i stream on my unfiltered youtube channel i'm going to be talking about scientology tomorrow um tell uh owen unfiltered is what it's called now i just changed the name and it's uh yeah scientology god dude I, I, i'll tell you what i'll tell you what the subject is i'm going to talk about the time that Scientology infiltrated the U.S. government and got away with the h highest and got away with the highest number of documents ever. It was the biggest infiltration in U.S. history of the U.S. government. And I'm also going to talk about the time that they framed a reporter that was a writer that was writing about him for like bomb threats g they lifted her fingerprint and put it on stationary and all kinds of stuff it was crazy they were planning to assassinate her and everything we're going to talk about that for real so if you want to hear about that yes operation snow white and operation freak out and operation lovely those are the names of the things that i'm talking about uh if you miss it i'm going to be uploading an edited version to my to this channel right here later uh so keep a lookout all right let me get into julie green um all right i'll tell you what without any context let me just show you this clip here okay i'll just say this julie green believes that biden is going to be removed because he's like the antichrist and Donald Trump is going to be installed as the de facto dictator, as the Messiah or whatever. So check this out. This is from um, September 8th, 2023. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to change my audio outputs. I forget that every single time. Forgive me. Hang on. Audio outputs. Oh, yeah. And uh, while we listen to Julie Green act like a nutter butter as usual... We're going to play a little bit of Mario Maker 2. It should just be in the background. won't bother you too much if you've never played it or seen it before. I'm a liar. All right. And I have not failed. I'm allowing the enemies to do these things because they are about to take their ultimate fall. The enemies about to take their ultimate fall. Okay. So right now, she her eyes are closed and everything. Because she claims to be receiving a secret message from God. This is a prophecy from God that she's laying down for us right now, okay? Their ultimate destruction is near. They, of course, is undefined, but usually in QAnon circles, it's the Jews. Yes. You will see it. One big, massive event unfolding right in front of your eyes oh my god okay so what she's describing here wow i suck at this game what she's describing is in QAnon circles it's called the storm it's this big event where all of the evildoers are arrested you know all of the evil congressmen 
Trump is reinstated and Biden is taken out of office and whatever other nonsense, you know, it, it's one big event. So it seems like it's a new claim, but it's really not. She's just like repeating things that people already believed. So I was just fixing my light over here. It's making it a little bit brighter. Maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. Anyway. She's just repeating things people have been saying for, like, since 2017, pretty much. That's when uh, QAnon came about. Wow. There was a clear condition that said, do not jump. And that was literally the first thing that I did. What, what am I thinking? All right, keep listening here. It'll be hard for you to believe what you're seeing. Walls are coming down. Their walls are coming down. I've mentioned the Red Sea before, and I'm mentioning it again. Why is she, why is she taking such long pauses in between her quote unquote prophecies or or whatever? Is it because she can't think of what to say next or what? That the dead air is driving me nuts, man. You see what I did. Do you see what I did before? Do you see what I did for my children? I am stopping your enemies. Their walls are falling in on them. And they will not stay in the pow in their power. They will not stay in their positions. This is interesting because she kind of like deviates from a, what a lot of other QAnoners claim, which is that Trump is secretly still in power. And we just don't know about it or whatever. Or he's like president of Earth or whatever other nonsense. So she's saying she believes that Biden is in power. Hang on. Let me see. Let me, there's a video. I, I, I know exactly where I should find it in my clips compilation or my clips thing here. Give me a second to pull this puppy up. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, this is Johnny Enlow, also a QAnon pastor. And this really describes like the QAnon belief about what Donald Trump is right now and where he is and who Biden is and all of that. Uh, people want more proof of what's presently the truth what's going on behind the scenes but when there is a fog of war you can't tell so you try to tell people president trump is not as disempowered as you think um and they want proof well the proof will be forthcoming i think okay well when the proof comes let me know i think the proof will be forthcoming that over the last year ever since november 3rd of last year till now they will find out that there is not a person on the planet that has exercised more power and authority than President Donald Trump. That In other videos, he outright comes out and says, Donald Trump is, is president of Earth. There is nobody on the planet that's exercised more power than Donald Trump, is what he just said. Seriously. Will be wow. revealed. And wow. it's, it's, been, it's been bigger than being, if anything, he made a shift from president of the United States to president of the world in the sense of how he's being used and what's taking place. Now, for those who want the proof, that's why you have to get through the fog of war or be above the fog of war to actually know what's... Uh okay, I'm sorry, Johnny. It doesn't work that way, all right? You need to give me the evidence before you can expect me to believe a word out of your mouth. That's, that's just how I process stuff, okay? I'm sorry that I'm not going to believe you without question. That's just how it is what's what's taking place so anyway that's the standard q and on um stance on this uh but what's what's interesting about q and on is that there are different denominations effectively it's split into like sections right there's a, a section that wow i can kind of see a little fuzziness behind me there well, let me see if i can fix that there's a section of q and on that's the uh, kind of cordoned off by who 
it follows by the follow or, or by the leader basically um michael brian protzman was the leader the most recent leader of a group called Negative 48. That was the QAnon denomination, the name of it, basically. Uh, so there are different kind of denominations of it. And I, I guess Julie Green is from a denomination that believes that Biden stole it from Trump rather than Trump is secretly the president right now. OK, interesting. They will not stay where they are. No, they will not. I am removing them i am restoring you remember she's supposedly speaking with god's voice things are going to happen quicker now in a flash speedily things are happening happening Okay, well, any and second now. I have not now. failed. Well, God, that was out of nowhere. Any second now, right? I would love to see some kind of evidence. I'll take anything at all. Absolutely absurd. Every time these people prophesy some nonsense, it doesn't come true. They have to come up with some excuse for why they were right all along. They're, it, it, you know, it's an embarrassment, honestly. How do these people live with themselves? Well, I wanted to watch that effectively like that entire live stream that she did. I found. Now, of course, I found basically where it starts for the most part. 15 minutes in. OK, Jesus Christ. It, all the other stuff was advertisements and all the other garbage. Now, just remember, I sell merchandise. Now, just remember, I hold a ministry. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, God, I try to just like jump into it as soon as. I start a live stream like it, it kind of blows me away. OK, wow. Now, I, I don't think this can be saved. Yeah. OK, I'm skipping. It kind of blows me away that other people like have 15 minutes of lead up in their live streams. It's crazy. And, and look at this. Look, there's a clock behind her. 646 a.m. Are you kidding me? 646 in the morning. That's when you're live streaming. That sounds insufferable. Who would get up that early to listen to some nutcase say some nutty stuff when we can just watch it after the fact right anyways so let's start listening to julie green here see what she has to say she's about to jump into it here first the title of this word is the lord has the final say all right i'm sorry i'm gonna turn it down a little for you guys and that's something that we should be getting down in our heart and repeating over and over and over again. I want to read you a story in the Bible where it looked like all hope was lost, complete devastation, complete loss of everything. Okay, I actually watched a little bit of this, and she talks about King David. Now, if you don't know that story, I'll... I'll give you a little bit. Of, I'll give you what you need to know about it to understand what she's getting at here. But she claims Donald Trump is David, effectively. Which means like a, a special person, like a messiah or whatever. Because remember what the Lord keeps telling us time and time again. Things may look worse. Now he said it looks worse, but he never said it was going to stay that way. Things are not how they appear to be. Oh, I love it, dude. You know why I love this so much? If you follow my channel with any regularity, you will know that Julie Green, very, well, not too long ago. Let me see here. Hang on. Let me find it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, here we go. She famously claimed there would not be an indictment of Donald Trump. I told you, my children, don't worry about the things that you see. Because the things that you see are temporary. What they are trying to do to your rightful president, that's a laughing matter. There will be no indictment of my son. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I guess 
She probably doesn't want this uh, this video played too often, right? I love it, dude. I love it to death. So, anyways, uh, that came out um, mid March 2023. That was right before his indictment. And now we have Julie Green saying what? Of everything. Because remember what the Lord keeps telling us time and time again. Well, he kept telling us Trump wasn't going to be indicted. That's what he said, right? Through you? Things may look worse. Now, he said it looks worse, but he never said it was going to stay that way. Things are not how they appear to be. So it may appear to be worse, but God is saying when it looks that way, that is our victory no matter how like crazy that may seem yeah well see it's not that it seems crazy it just completely contradicts reality entirely like we're not seeing what you are telling us that we're seeing and that i'm sorry man that's just that's insane but it's always the darkest before a dawning or the before a victory so what we have to remind ourselves is I love those two words that the Lord gave me a long time ago. And I say it all the time, but God. So what if the economy goes, but God, what if something happens with lockdowns, but God, what if the internet's turned off or blackouts, whatever it is, but God. That right there is how I know definitively that she's actually a QAnoner. She's not just a right wing evangelical nutter butter. She's a full blown QAnoner. Because QAnon, quote unquote, prophesied or foretold that there would be Internet blackouts, 10 days of Internet and power blackouts, complete blackouts. And we would have to forage for berries in the woods or something. I don't know. So you got to prep and get your canned goods up, you know, all lined up on your shelves and stuff. Of course, that never happened. They claimed it was going to happen in 2017. And then they claimed it was going to happen in 2018 and then 2019 and 2020, 2021. I mean, they just kept making the claim over and over and over again, and it just never happened. So anyways, um, I guess she's still backing it up, huh? Dawning or the before a victory. So what we have to remind ourselves is I love those two words that the Lord gave me a long time ago, and I say it all the time, but God. So what if the economy goes, but God? What if something happens with lockdowns? But God. What if the internet's turned off or blackouts? Whatever it is. But God. She's so insufferable. I'm not saying any of these th things to you to bring in fear. God says he's not saying any of these things to bring fear. We are supposed to be in faith. He said in that prophetic word, he is looking for people who are going to stand in faith. Because we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. So I want to give you this. Um, you just gave it to me, actually, while I was. Mm, I bet. Just gave you this word, huh? Just gave you this prophetic word. You just heard it. Uh-huh. Go on. Listening to it with you. Um, it's 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Okay. Now, th I believe I. Oh, my God. You guys don't even know how much reading I did today to prep for this. This part of the Bible. If you're unfamiliar, I'll give you a little prepper on it. It's <clears throat> it's basically telling the story of King Saul, King David, King Solomon, and all of those guys, right? Um, if you don't know anything about it, King David, um, all right. David was exiled to the south at a time when Israel was split into two sections, basically. It was split into Judea, which was in the south, and it was and Israel, which was to the north, right? And the tri the tribe of Judah, the you know, there were twelve tribes of Israel. The tribe of Judah largely occupied the area to the south of Israel called Judea. Okay, I I can't get a good level here. And uh, King David was exiled originally before being king. He's just, he's young. 
he was exiled to Judea, and he kind of became like a Robin Hood type of character, basically. And, uh, you know, gained prominence and fame and adoration of the masses, so on and so forth. That's the story being told in the section that she's referring to here, I believe. Uh, wow, I didn't even see that. So uh, David eventually, King Saul, is is killed by his courtiers. Just some people that hung around in his court, I guess. And King David steps in and says, I'm taking control now. And then he killed those courtiers for treason. Um, I'm not 100% convinced that, you know, things played out exactly the way that the Bible describes it. I'm not even convinced that David was a real person 100%. But uh, that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. So that's the story th that she's telling right now. She's about to tell. It, that's the story told in First and Second Samuel. And this is a story of David and Ziglag. Oh, 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 one more thing. As a QAnoner, let me explain one more quick thing about this. So I, as I, oh my God, I suck. I suck. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, Israel was split into two tribes, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Israel, basically. And uh, there was the north and the south, and they hated each other, couldn't get along. And uh, one was run by Rehoboam, the south. The other was run by Jerobo Bo uh, Jeroboam, the north, after King David, after King Solomon, I mean, after all these people. It was uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and there, there was a split between the two different groups. And eventually, the, the QAnon claim, the incorrect QAnon claim, is that the people to the north went up through the Caucasus Mountains, which is in Russia, the Russia area, and they ended up in, uh, they, they sailed to the Great British Isles eventually and became, uh, you know, English people, basically. They became England or whatever. And then they sailed over to America and made a new covenant with God. And they were the founding fathers of the United States. That's the claim. So the claim by QAnon is that the founding fathers are really actually secretly Jewish the Jews that are in Israel right now are imposters, and the Jews that came over to America made a new covenant with God, and this is new Israel, America is, and Donald Trump is actually the son of man, the Messiah. The blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's the, the general gist of the belief. So they just came back from a uh, massive battle, David and all of his men. Now, uh, this is verse 1. And when David and his men came home to Ziglag on the third day, they found the Amalekites had made a raid on the south and on the Ziglag and struck Ziglag and burned it with fire. So they came back from fighting a great war. And all of a sudden they came back and their city, where they lived, was completely devastated. Again, at this point, um, there was a lot of, like, warring between different oh my god did i just do that i did i just did that i should have oh damn there's a lot of war happening between like israel and judea and palestine and you know all the other places in the area um the philistines were at war with them and, and stuff like that so anyways there's just a lot of war taking place and israel and judea largely didn't like each other because um, Israel was, well, you know, this is the bias of the writer of Deuteronomy, whoever it happened to be. There are claims that it's Moses. Moses isn't e even a real person, so that he was never real. Anyways, uh, the claims made in Deuteronomy are that the people in Israel, in the north, were worshiping Canaanite gods like Baal and others, you know. Um, 
There were a whole bunch of them. There's a whole pantheon. I don't remember. And Yahweh came from the Canaanite pantheon. Yahweh is one of the Canaanite gods, right alongside Baal. And there are 12, I think. Uh, and all of the Canaanite gods were created by El and are collectively known as the Elohim. So anyway, that should give you a little bit of context if you've ever read certain parts of the Bible and didn't understand what was happening there. Anyways, there was a lot of complaining by the South that the North, the is you know Israel, was practicing, you know their uh, what do you call it? They were doing their whole, they were celebrating like Canaanite things basically. That was the complaint by the South. It was burned down to the ground. There was nothing left. Their women were gone. Their children were gone. I think at this time, this was the northern province, if you'd call it that, uh, which is Israel, not Judea. The wealth was gone. Anything they had was gone. Everything they had was completely devastated and gone. In verse 2, And they had taken the women and all who were there, both great and small and captive. They killed no one, but carried them off and went on their way. Jesus Christ, dude. How disturbing is that? They took the women and carried them off as like, what? Like treasures of war. The women. That is some disturbing shit right there, man. I'm sorry. That's that for actually, you know, that's why when a war starts, like when the Ukraine war started, for example, they got the women out immediately. A lot like husbands couldn't leave. Women were allowed to leave. Basically, they told the women to GTFO because they're unfortunately viewed as like spoils of war. It's just disgusting. Why do you think the enemies did that? The enemies were mad how powerful David and his army really were. Yeah, well, I no, I think they did that because they were at war with Israel and is she trying to justify, like, or or explain a country's reasoning for, like, destroying a city when they're at war with it? What? And so they wanted to bring great fear into David and his men. So what they did was they burned down their city. They took everyone they loved and everything that belonged to them. They wanted David and his men to get under so much pressure to just go to wherever their women and children were and all their belongings were. Well, I thought they took their women, children, and belongings. To beg them to bow or to comply to whatever command the enemy had. I think it's fascinating that she's taking the side of the North in this situation when, you know, largely I think Christians side with the South, the South piece, um, the, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, Judea throughout the, this specific part of the Bible. Eventually when David becomes King, I think that Christians usually side with King David, but yeah, that's interesting. The enemy wants you to get in a desperate situation where you feel like hope is completely gone and there's nothing left. And when they have you in that situation, that's where they know they can make you bow to their every command. Okay, I'm not asking anybody to bow to my command. I mean, I presumably I'm the enemy here, right? Am I the enemy? I don't want anyone to bow to my command. I don't want anyone to... None of that stuff. I don't care. Okay? Live your life. You do you. I don't care at all. Honestly. Dude. Oh, God. That really... That's a shame. Um, okay. I think I can beat this pretty easily. I suspect. So we'll give it one more try. Anyway. Uh, these people live in like a paranoid delusion 24-7. Where like they're the focus of like hate by big evil groups of satan worshiping whatever it's insane fear 
is a tactic of war. And i.e. we we as Christians are at war with them. And who's the them in the equation? Usually it's the fake Jews, the ones that are pretending to be Jews, the ones that are that occupy Israel right now. They're not real Jews is what you know, that's kind of how it's framed up. Or it's people to the left of hunting the homeless for sport. Oh, sorry, guys. Or it's people to the left of hunting the homeless for sport. Hopefully that wasn't up for too long. Uh, it's, I have to correct my camera every few minutes. Make sure that it doesn't, whatever. Anyway, this is just psychotic. I'm here on time. So happy. Thanks again for what you do. I'm a huge fan. Thank you, Zinka Cat. Welcome. Glad you came. Uh, Real Pumpkin J, if God's on your side, girl, you need better management. Epic Rap Battles of History, Miley Cyrus v. Joan of Arc, right? I see spin. Hey, Owen, did you ever cover 2,000 Mules? No, no, I didn't cover that. I thought about it, but it's propaganda from beginning to end, and I don't feel right about playing it unless I do a massive amount of research, and I just never got into the amount of research necessary to feel comfortable covering it. Um, but I don't know. One of these days, I may. I covered Plandemic. That one took some real research. That one was rough. I had to, you know, make sure that I was debunking everything all along the way. I could not let claims go unchallenged, you know, um, morally. I just couldn't let that happen. So, anyway. Uh, thank you guys for the super chats. Appreciate that. And this was to bring much fear to David. And in her mind, Trump is David. That's why she's bringing up First Samuel in the first place. In her mind, Trump is King David that comes along and, uh, well, David's famous for uniting the North and the South and creating, like, a kingdom that occupied, like, the only corridor that connected Egypt, or I'm sorry, that connected Africa to, uh, like, to Asia. And you know what that means. Everybody that comes through there with any kind of goods of any sort has to pay a tariff to them. So that's what David is really famous for, uniting Israel with the South. Uh, of course, it broke apart in nearly immediately after his death, but anyway. Now I want to keep reading. Look what also happened to David. Verse 3, so David and his men came down to the town. And behold, it was burned, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. Verse 4, Then David and the men with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. They were so devastated and so broken, they couldn't even cry anymore. Trump's warriors. Remember, Trump is David. I, she hasn't come out and said that yet. I think she gets to that soon. Or did she call him David in the first clip? I don't... I don't remember if she did or not. Anyway, Trump is David in her mind. And she is like the warrior fighting with Trump or with David. And she thinks that the fake Jews and the evil liberals have taken everything from her. I don't know what she thinks that I've taken or what anybody has taken from her. But anyways, that's how she's framing it up. They had no tears left to cry. Verse 5, David's two wives, and it talks about that, and then goes on to verse... Oh, yeah, just going to skip over the part where David had two wives. Whoop! Yeah, just completely ignore that part. <laughs> I love it. David's two wives, okay, and then it goes on. That's so funny, right? Just completely ignore that. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right, polygamy. He had, like... Uh, God, how many wives did it, did uh, David have? Let me just see if I can find that out. How many... Oh, my God, the cat is being really loud. How many wives did King David have? Eight. He had eight wives. And the reason that he took those wives was be probably because he liked being with, like, a whole bunch of women. But the justification he gave was so that he could unite all of the warring factions and areas within this region. And... uh you know, bring it all together under one big kingship, under his stewardship or whatever. 
Or sex. Dude, I just love how she just skips right over that. That's great. Cashmere is dragging a box, and it's very annoying because I'm trying to live stream. He's so frustrating. Anyway. All right. Cry anymore. They had no tears left to cry. Verse 5. David's two wives, and it talks about that, and then goes on to verse 6. Yep, just going to ignore that. Whoopsie daisy. David was greatly distressed. I have that underlined in my Bible. This first Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. Well, yeah, I mean, his... Well, I don't, I, I don't think he was old enough to have a wife yet, was he? Or I, Well, I guess they said that he had multiple wives. He's greatly distressed. Didn't they just take all of his stuff? David was greatly distressed. And the reason why I have that is because right now many people are greatly distressed. They feel like they're losing everything. They feel like well, I mean, Donald Trump's supporters feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because they've been trained to feel that way. I mean, they've been told that, you know, everything's been taken from them when in fact it has not. They haven't lost anything. They just, like, live in this delusional fantasy land. You know, I was listening to a uh, Trump rally where I, apparently there's, like, this um, uh, popular position that was espoused that Biden has committed treason and is going to be executed for his crimes. Wow. That's a lot of people. That's not just, like, one guy. That's, like, a... a growing viewpoint in the Trump movement that Biden is going to be executed for treason. Imagine if like people to the left were saying Trump is going to be executed for what he did on January 6th. He should be executed for this. We want him executed. That's crazy. I don't stand for that. I want him to pay the price, which is you know, uh, jail time maybe, or or at least going through the court system. I would like to see that. But I'm not, like, talking about, like, execution. Like, what the hell is going on right now? These people are, like, deeply disturbing. Julie Green, QAnoners, by and large. It's so disturbing to hear some of the stuff they espouse, seriously. And they are way beyond anything that I could possibly justify morally or stand for. That's crazy. All hope is gone. They don't have enough money to pay their bills because inflation is absolutely insane. No, no, it isn't right now. Inflation as of this moment right now is 3.8%. That's not terribly high. High inflation is 6, 7, 8%. That's crazy. That's what it was when Biden took office and he got it down to, I think, 3.1 or 3.2. And then it went down or it went back up to 3.8. And it's kind of moving up and down in that little range right there. Inflation is not completely out of control. Now, there are other economic factors that I'm really not happy with at this moment. Like, for example, the fact that there's massive wealth inequality. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. But she's not going to talk about that, is she? Because the solution to that is higher taxes for the rich. Can't have that as, you know, one of the options that we put on the table, can we? Jesus, dude, these cats are just fighting each other. It's crazy. Anyway. Freedoms are being taken away left and right. What freedoms are you losing, Julie? Which ones? Tell me. Which freedoms did you lose? Have you lost a single freedom? I don't know of anything that Julie Green has lost in the past, I don't know, hell, um, 30 years. What freedoms has Julie Green specifically lost? Aside from her right to get an abortion, of course. The, the things that she doesn't care about. What freedoms has Julie Green, as a conservative, white, Christian woman, lost? They're under great distress. David was also 
under great distress. The men spoke stoning him. Now the men who were with him, his buddies, his men and, you know, the, the military with him, the army with him. Right, so David's army, okay, or the army that was with David. I think David was a young boy before being exiled, and then he took command. Holy Christ on a cracker, the cats are skidding across the floor. That were just fighting alongside of him. Were so greatly distressed, they started to turn on each other. They started to turn on David. That's exactly what the enemy wanted. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. The enemy wanted them greatly distressed. The enemy wanted them with no hope. So is the, the, like the claim or the upset that she's complaining about right now that Republicans won't just unite behind the Messiah, Donald Trump? Is that what she's complaining about right now? I think so. I, that's what I'm picking up right now. The enemy wanted them to turn on each other. Why do you think that's happening now in the body of Christ? Wait, is that happening in the body of Christ, quote unquote? What do you mean by that? Why do you think people are turning on each other? Why do you think so many people are under great distress? Because Donald Trump is fomenting great distress and people turning on each other and stuff right now. He wants to control it or it won't be controlled, basically, is how Donald Trump views it. So the, the Republican Party will not exist unless he is in control of it. He will destroy it, see it burn to the ground if it's going to exist in any form. That's, that's the plan right now. And there are people that don't want that in the Republican Party. By the way, a limited light, David was a total... A twizwad in Vice Rhino's terms. Okay, I'd never heard that before. That's good, though. Yeah, David was an interesting character, to say the least. This is Just uh, so much dead air in Julie Green's little thing, right? God, like, I, I, pl I hit play, and I'm like, D is it not working? Like, what's going on here? She's just dead silent for long stretches of time. This is the enemy's final tactic and final tool they can use. And they what is their final tactic and tool? And I'm sorry, I should be saying our, not their. Uh, when she refers to they, she's referring to people to the left of her, basically. And she is about as far right as you get. I mean, insanely far right. They think they have you exactly where they want you. You will s submit to their power. Now, I want to again long stretch of silence. Why? Keep reading and see what happened. Verse six. David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him, because. Oh, by the way, I you know it's not lost on me that she is teaching as a woman. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the Bible is clear about that that's kind of forbidden right is it first timothy or second timothy i don't remember which one of the timothys said that one of the many timothys Mo or one of the multiple timothys said that the, uh, the souls of them were bitterly grieved each man for his sons and daughters and i have this underlined and highlighted but david encouraged and strengthened himself in the lord his god when everybody was turning on him, he lost everybody dear to him. He lost what he thought he had left was his friends that were fighting alongside of him were turning against him because they were so greatly grieved. I'm not sure like where we are in the timeline. Is she talking about like when he became king or before he was king or what? I don't, I'm, I'm not following her train of logic here. But in that time where David couldn't cry anymore, in that time where all hope was lost, in that time where people were turning on him, David, greatly grieved, started encouraging himself in the Lord. And that's what a lot of us have to do. 
Right. So uh, this is what he did, right? There was division within the kingdom. I mean, I'm ass just assuming that she's talking about uh, King David having control of the entire region. David um, played the Christians and the uh, the the people that worshipped Canaanite gods. He played them against each other. You know, they celebrate the Baal worship and things like that. He used to, uh, I mean, they were both viewed as religious cults. You know, Baal worshipers were viewed as a religious cult, the Canaanite gods in certain areas, and Yahweh worshipers were viewed as, as uh, a religious cult in different areas. So he liked to play them against each other. And uh, are you serious? I'm not doing this. And uh, get them to hate each other, basically. Um you know, divide and conquer, exactly what she's describing here. We are greatly grieved and in distress. That's the last thing that your enemy wants you to do is when they think they have you and they've done everything to you to break you into that submission. When they have you where you're going to be so greatly distressed, distressed and grieved that you won't fight them back. The last thing that they expect you to do is to encourage yourself in the Lord. Okay. Um, well, I don't believe in your bastardized ass backwards interpretation of the Lord. So that's not on my mind. Why does the enemy not want you to encourage yourself in the Lord? I, go nuts to your heart's content. Like I care. Do it as much as you want. Just don't be a nutcase this way. Because once you encourage yourself in the Lord, once you start giving that sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Wait, sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Okay. Remember, it says in God's word, we enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Enter his courts. There's a your mom joke in here somewhere. Somebody finish that for me. Who did God have on the front lines of the military or the armies that were going into war? He had praise and worshipers. Why? Because it destroys the enemy. Actually, <laughs> it's kind of funny she says this. Uh, you know why God, quote unquote, sent um, worshipers to the front lines? Do you know who goes to the front lines before anybody else? cannon fodder people who are expendable and preferably somebody who believes in the cause to their dying breath extremists that's the perfect group of people to send to the front line because they will do literally anything to accomplish the goal and they're expendable because they're you know they're absolutely insane uh, i'm not just talking like christian extremists right now i'm talking about any extremists of any sort this tends to be the way that armies throughout history have viewed it. You want to use, you know, um, religious cult members or extremists or zealots of, of some kind as cannon fodder in war. That's why. Front lines of the military or the armies that were going into war. For the record, I don't even I, I don't know that it's accurate to. I, like, we don't have almost any information from this period of time that she's referring to. So I don't, I'm not even sure that she has no way of really knowing this, to my knowledge, unless there's some bit of information that I'm missing. I don't remember them saying that they sent worshipers into war in this specific war. I mean, I know in other wars they sell or they send religious zealots in, but yeah. He had praise and worshipers. Why? Because it destroys the enemy. So instead of David. Actually, it's because they're the, you know, they're the most expendable, but okay. He fell down. He did. He was broken. He was distressed. He was grieved. He was crying to the point where he couldn't cry anymore. But the point is he didn't stay that way. Micah chapter 7, verse 8. One of my favorite scriptures. 
Okay, Micah was a god. You guys have no idea how much research I did for this. Seriously, so much. Micah was one of 12 minor prophets around this time. This is basically, to my knowledge, between the years 800 BCE and 500 BCE, give or take. If 550, 600, somewhere in that vicinity. There were a bunch of minor prophets that did things like they would prophesy that we'd get good weather and it would be perfect for planting crops. And they know that because God told them. And sure enough, we have good weather. So they're trusted as a prophet, like Zechariah, for example. And then they claim that, you know, uh, then they claim that some specific person's going to be like put in as king and that that falls flat on its face. So these minor prophets, Micah, Amos, Joel, Jonah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, so on and so forth. The minor prophets prophesied the most ridiculous stuff sometimes. And yeah, anyway, the, Micah was one of those minor prophets. Reju Oops, sorry, step back here. Oh, and you know that verse in the Bible that talks about the Messiah being identifiable because he'll be from Bethlehem and he'll be he'll ride in on an ass or whatever uh, on a donkey that is from one of the minor prophets one of the minor prophets prophesied that like Hosea or I don't remember which one or like which verse that was but yeah minor prophets he didn't stay that way Micah chapter 7 verse 8 one of my favorite scriptures Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. We shouldn't be getting down on ourselves because we fall down. Everybody falls down. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, I don't know if that was the message of that, that verse, though, but okay. I suppose I'll get on board because that's a decent message or whatever. Everybody gets to a point sometimes where you're just, you don't think you can fight anymore. You don't think you can get up again. You don't think you have that ability to stand anymore because you stood for so long. It doesn't look like anything's changing. If, in fact, it looks like everything's getting worse instead of better. Okay. That's exactly what your enemy wants you to believe. Okay. I don't know about this whole, the enemy is after me thing or whatever, but, uh, Okay, I mean, it's a good message to, if you fall down, stand back up and keep going. But we should look to this example of David. When everything was gone and all hope was lost, he turned and encouraged himself in the Lord. Let's see what happens. Oh, I see a Zolutionist, I think says uh, never got a, a chance to say thanks you helped me deconvert four to five years ago that's awesome glad I could you know contribute in some way although it was really you that was doing all the heavy lifting I was just there to you know uh, be a, a soundboard for lack of a better term if it weren't for if you oh my god I just did I just okay if it weren't for the fact like you wouldn't have come here and listened if you weren't ready to kind of dip your toes in for lack of a better term to if you weren't ready to talk about this stuff or think about it at all you may not have deconverted in the first place so uh, you can really be proud of yourself dude i i okay this this level is terrible anyway glad i could help the book of revelations warns us of false prophets exactly referring to people like this trying to use their bible bets against real truth right not not just the book of revelation but uh the book of deuteronomy so we got new testament we got old testament holy christ dude this is this is crazy this is so many hammer bros too many hammer bros yeah book uh book of deuteronomy um 18 verse 23 i believe is where it talks about false prophets and how you can identify them and everything in verse 8, 1 Samuel, chapter 30, in verse 8. 
And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? The Lord answered him and said, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them without fail and recover all. Um, actually, the Lord didn't say jack shit to David because the Lord was not talking to people. Okay. And, and he's certainly not again. talking. I'm sorry. And he's certainly not talking to you today. Get help, Julie. And David inquired, or David started praying and asking God this question, saying, shall I pursue the troops? Shall I overtake them? The Lord answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake them without fail. Oh, there's a good excuse. Uh, God told me I should go in to fight a war. Yeah, it was God that told me to do that. So you all have to obey me. And we're going to send the worshipers in first. <laughs> Love it. And recover all. Is our God not the same God? No matter how much we've lost in our nations... No matter if it looks like our nation is gone, our freedoms and our justice system and everything looks upside down. You haven't lost any freedoms, Julie. Nothing is any different now than it was 15 years ago for, you know, white, Christian, conservative, nutcase, QAnon or women. And this is where the enemy wants us greatly grieved, distressed. So we submit. Wait, how are people in her mind submitting? How is the church submitting? I don't understand. What the hell are you talking about? And what our Heavenly Father is asking us today, this day, is to encourage ourselves. In him. So just get, get encouraged and believe the claims of QAnon because they're all one in the same. The whole belief system is the same in her mind. You know, QAnon, Donald Trump's the prophet, or I'm sorry, the Messiah, she's the prophet. And uh, God is coming to do a blackout or some other nonsense. It's all the same. It's all the same belief to her. Encourage ourselves that he will not fail. Encourage ourselves that he is a sure thing. Encourage ourselves that he does have the final say. Encourage ourselves that we will recover everything that has been stolen. What did you what did you lose? Say, Julie, that just looks impossible. Well, I'm glad you said that. Impossible is a word that the enemy loves to use. But God is the God whom nothing is impossible. Okay, so she says, but God. You know, she said that at the beginning of this, too. But God. We serve a God who shows up in the impossible situations in life. So when your enemy is shouting impossible, it's never going to happen. It's not going to work. You're going to lose everything. Give up. Quit. Run away. You say, God is on my side. And whom shall I fear? You say it's impossible, Satan? Well, guess what? I serve a God who shows up in every impossible situation, and he is a sure thing. Okay, well, any five minutes now, right? We've been waiting for 2,000 years for the return of Jesus, and it's going to happen any five minutes. You just wait and see, right? For what it's worth, uh, Julie Green actually believes that, you know, Trump is the return of Jesus effectively. So um, she, do she thinks that it's actually going to, you know, she thinks that it's happening now. Like in our country right now. You know, a lot of people are looking to the next election to save this nation. And one of the things that God said is, don't look to election to save your nation. You look to God. 
It looks like it's impossible because we've had so many elections stolen. There are so many? How many elections do you think have been stolen, Julie? FYI, no elections have been stolen in the United States, except for, well, Al Gore had his election stolen. Um, you know, he actually won, in all seriousness, really, in 2000. The 2000-whatever election, that was stolen, for real. But, I mean, when I say stolen, I mean the vote count went to Al Gore. He won. And George Bush took the presidency anyways, but that's neither here nor there. The 2020 election was one of the, it was the most secure election in American history. The FBI was all over that stuff looking for any, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and I died. The FBI was all over it looking for any clues, any kind of hints that there could be some malfeasance some kind of questionable activity donald trump's fbi was looking for evidence of some questionable activities never found it if he had he could have taken it to a court and you know done something about it he never did isn't that weird is that weird to anybody else the 2020 election was not stolen julie jesus christ God only knows how many have been stolen from us so far. God only knows how many have been stolen from us. And a lot of people just want to say, give up and quit. Not going to do this, and I'm not going to do that. And we might as well just, you know, whatever. God's saying, don't comply to that lie. Don't submit to tyranny. Don't submit to injustice. Don't submit to those things. Well, well I'm not sure what... Julie Green is expecting her audience to do here. I mean, Trump lost the election and Biden became the president. So what's the audience supposed to do? God's saying, encourage yourself in me. You will overtake and recover all without fail. Any five minutes, right? Like, she didn't lose anything anyways. I don't even know what she's talking about. Because God doesn't fail. We may not know exactly how it looks like. David didn't even know exactly what he was going to do at that particular point. He was just asking and seeking God, what should I do? They like, what particular point is she talking about with David? Again, I don't know. She mentioned his wives. Uh, there were a lot of wars David took part in. He was assisting it by carrying supplies and stuff when he's younger. Was it before or after, he, you know, his exile to the South or whatever? I just, like, I have no idea what she's even talking about right now. They literally took everything from me. Am I supposed to go and kill him? Am I supposed to go and fight him back? What am I supposed to do, Lord? God said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Oh, wow. Uh, that, okay, that's a disturbing message to hear from Julie Green. Did you guys catch what she just said? Listen to this one more time. I'm going to have to, actually, you know what? I'm going to write this down, this timestamp. Let's see, 2811. I'm going to talk about this later. Give me a second. Let me write this down. 28... Okay, listen to this one more time, what she said here, because this is important. Without fail. Because God doesn't fail. Okay. We may not know exactly how it looks like. David didn't even know exactly what he was going to do at that particular point. He was just asking and seeking God, what should I do? They literally took everything from me. So she's comparing herself to David. Believing that everything was taken from her when she literally didn't lose anything. But okay, so she's comparing herself to David and, you know, the fact that she thinks she lost stuff. Go on. Am I supposed to go and kill him? Am I supposed to go and fight him back? Am I supposed to go and kill them? What am I supposed to do, Lord? God said pursue, overtake, and recover all. Yes, you are supposed to go kill them. That is the lesson that Julie Green wanted to deliver to us. Julie, 
get help for real. This is insane. Seriously. Is this nuts to anybody else or is it just me? My God, dude, she needs help. Oop, trying to win this. Okay, there we go. And that's exactly what David did. And it shows us later in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 19, nothing was missing, small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David so he went in, he killed this army that he didn't like, and he took everything that they had. David recovered all. Look at so basically what she's saying is God helps who help uh, God helps those who help themselves and I'm kind of tired of waiting for God to return our stuff to us so now it's time to you know take it back ourselves it seems like right is that is that a, an uncharitable interpretation or is that what she's saying it sounds like that's what she's saying Jesus dude that's crazy you anyway, let, let me know what you think about that in the comments I am not surprised to hear that from somebody like Julie Green. Hey, Owen, Nericle and I, wait, I'm sorry, Nericle and a few others request to be mods on your channel. And uh, to help out, would you be willing to make us ones to help out? Yeah, sure, I'll make you mods. Hi, safe. Um, let's see, Nericle. Uh, Nericle needs to speak in the chat before I can add as a mod, but yes. When I see Nericle again in the chat, I will add as a mod. If God created everything, why was Satan created, right? Well, the interesting thing about that is that God was never actually intended to be uh, omnipresent, omniscient. Oh, I see Nericle. That is a moderator. There we go. God was never intended to be all of that stuff, like all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful, and all of that. I mean, in the book of Genesis, he was, oops, he was looking through the garden for... Um, Adam and Eve, they were hiding from him, remember? If he's all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-wise, why would he be, or how is it that they could have possibly hidden from him? How would that be possible? Why would he have created them knowing all of the suffering that would have ensued? Why would he create Satan knowing that he would have done what he did? All-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful. Yahweh was never intended to be that. But anyways, yeah. Just absurd. Uh, thank you for the uh, the messages and the, the super chats and everything. I really appreciate that. And anyway, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you enjoyed this stream. If you want to see more of this stuff, I will be talking about it on my Unfiltered YouTube channel. Owen Unfiltered. Check that out. And uh, I do that Wednesdays and Thursdays, 10.30 a.m., to 2 30 p.m. roughly uh i'm trying to think if there's something else i wanted to mention uh let's see damn it's a shame that i have to get off of here because the numbers are growing a little bit all right well i'll tell you what i will see you guys hopefully over on unfiltered if not i will see you next week okay all right have a good one everybody